Hi, I'm Brian Ierson. I'm one of the instructors with the Computer Workshop. For today's tutorial, we're going to go ahead and create a network diagram using Visio 2021. As you can see, I have already created a blank document. This is based off of the basic network diagram template. As such, Visio opens the shape panels and gives us access to the computer and monitors stencil as well as the peripherals and network stencil. If I cannot find a symbol that I need in these, I can always search for other stencils by going to more shapes and then locating the network group and you can see there have been some new additions. We have a series of AWS as well as Azure. Now if you want to add another stencil you simply have to click on that stencil and it will be added to the list of stencils available in the shapes pane on the left side of your screen. If you decide you do not need that stencil you can always click on it again to remove it from the list. Sometimes locating a specific shape can prove to be rather when we have so many different stencils to search within. In those situations, it is easiest to simply come to the top of the shapes pane, locate the search shapes field, click into that field, and then type what you're searching for. So in this case, I'm going to search for internet and tap the enter key and now it will search all of the available stencils to see if it can find it. Once the search results are back we can see that we have quite a few results that it thinks may fit the bill and as I continue to scroll down through the list I can see that the internet icon that I am searching for is in the web and media icons stencil and you can see it's right here internet. Now I am going to simply just click on this and drag it into my drawing or onto my page and scale that right up. I can position this wherever I would like on my page and there is the first shape that I'm going to work with. Once I'm finished with my search and I no longer need to see the search results, I can always simply come back to the search shape pane or field I should say and then tap the X button to stop my search and return to my normal stencils. With my first shape in place, I'm now going to go ahead and continue to build the rest of my network diagram. To do this, I'm going to begin by going back to my network and peripherals stencil and start dragging on the shapes that I'd like to include in my diagram. So I'm going to throw a couple of firewalls couple of switches and a server to begin with. Once I have these I am now going to go ahead and jump back over to my computer and monitors stencil and I will drag a PC into place. Now I could continue to drag another PC and another PC and another PC. Another way that I can do that is by holding down the control key hovering over the shape that I want to duplicate and you'll notice there's a little plus icon next to my arrow which will allow me to drag a copy of this down below and as you can see my smart guides are letting me know when it is aligned vertically and horizontally to other objects in my drawing. So now that I have these two I'm going to go ahead and make another pair and another pair and another pair. And instead of doing this piecemeal, I'm going to do this in a very quick and efficient manner by simply using the shift key to select both of my shapes. So once again, I start with single shape, shift, and I click to select the other shape that I want. I'm now going to go ahead and group these. This can be done by going to the home tab up in the ribbon if necessary over to the arrange group on that tab where you will locate a group button. This drop down will allow me to choose to either group or ungroup objects. Now in this case I'm going to choose group and now those are going to act as a single unit. So if I click on one of these 
or the other, I'm going to select both. And I'm going to use the same duplication trick by holding down the control key and dragging another set or pair and another and another. Now you'll notice that they're kind of not very well you know, positioned in relation to each other. So I'm going to use my shift key and select all of these shapes. Go back up to my home tab into the arrange group and locate the position drop down and I'm going to distribute these horizontally. Now they are evenly spaced apart from each other in a perfect row. Now if that row was not perfect I could also use the align drop down and choose to align those either to their tops, middle, or bottom. And now they are perfectly in relation with each other. Now I no longer want them to be acting as a group so or a series of groups, so I will now come back to the group dropdown and simply choose ungroup. And we now have all of the main parts to our drawing. It is now time to start connecting these. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to simply come back up to my home tab, look in my tools group, and locate the connector tool. And I'm going to start by just coming to my internet icon. Now when you hover over this icon, you'll notice that a green box appears around it, which means that I can click and I'm going to draw my connector from this to another shape. Now if I come to the edge of my shape, you will see that I'm going to connect to this shape, again indicated by the green box. If I go to the middle of the shape, that green box becomes a really small one, and this is really going to connect to the background of that shape. And I will want to connect from center to center of each of these. So I will hover over my switch and drag back to the firewall and continue to do the same throughout. Once I have finished making all of my connections with the connector tool, I can then go back and choose my pointer tool from the list of available tools. Now everything that we have drawn is on a single layer. And while this is very simple, it does not make for a very easily navigable drawing or a very detailed drawing. So we're going to come to the editing group here on the home tab and locate the layers drop down and open the layer properties. As you can see the default layer here has been named connector and we're going to go ahead and choose to create a new layer and I'm going to name this layer internet, another new layer intranet, another layer for workstations, and finally another layer, and I'm going to name this Shipping Network. Now once we have all of these layers created, you'll notice that they are all visible, they are all printable. You can choose which one to make active. When you have finished with a layer and you do not wish to select or move anything on that layer, you can lock them. You can enable snapping and gluing, and you can even color code them. Once you have finished creating all of your layers, you can then tap the Apply button, make sure everything is OK, and then tap the OK button. So now that we've created the layers, it's time to start adding things to their specific layers. Now I'm going to select all of these objects by simply clicking the first one, using the shift key and I'm going to click on each of these. Now I do have to be careful and pay attention to not accidentally select any of the connectors. I literally only want these shapes. With all of my shapes selected, I now want to assign those to a given layer. So I will come back up to layers in the ribbon, to the drop down, and I will choose the option assign to layer. I get a list of all of the layers that I have created or are available. I will choose the layer that I would like those assigned to and then click OK. Now I'm going to go through and select all of my intranet connectors and switch and I will put those on the intranet layer. So.
Now one of the advantages of having all of my content properly set up on layers is that I can now select and arrange things very very easily. Now in this case I would like to make all of my internet or intranet connections a little bit larger so I'm gonna go back up here to my editing group and choose select and select by type. Now I can select by shapes, groups, guides, all of these objects. I can look by roles or I can use my layers and in this case layers is the way I want to go so I'm going to choose my intranet and click OK and you will notice that we have all of these objects selected. When I selected my intranet that did include my switch and I do not really want my switch to be included in this because I want to apply formatting to all of these connectors. So to deselect this from the group, I'm going to hold down the control key and click on that switch shape. And as you can see, it will deselect that from the group. Now I can come to my shape styles, go to the drop down here and choose my line color. I'm going to just choose a deep blue. I'm also going to come back up here and choose the weight of my line. And I'm going to make this a three-point weight. In other words, that's the thickness of the line. Now, I really don't like these lines being on top of all of my shapes like this because they're, shall we say, visually distracting. So back to the Arrange group in the Home tab, you will see the option Send to Back, and that will move all of those lines behind these shapes Deselecting, you can see that come into play very, very nicely. Now I want all of my connections to have the same look and feel, so I'm going to start by selecting my other connectors. In this case, I also do not really want to have those arrow heads in view. So back up, I can choose arrows and make that a solid no arrow line. Once again, I'm going to send that to the back behind all of those objects. So things are starting to take shape quite nicely. I'm going to double click on the first workstation shape and you'll notice when I double click that that my cursor now flashes in a text field just below that shape. So with this in mind I'm now going to simply begin typing the name of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this workstation 1. I'm going to do a quick control A to select all of that text and I'm going to change the size of my text to 14 points and make it bold. And I'm also going to change the color to black. Once I have done all of that, I'm also going to go ahead here and control C to copy that text so that I can now double click onto the next workstation and paste that in, backspace, and change the numeric value here from 1 to 3, and repeat until I'm done. All right, once I have named all of my workstations, I'm coming to the realization that I don't like the names of these above being right there below my objects or my shapes. So I'm going to move all of these, but before I do, I want to start thinking about setting some guides in place. So I'm going to work with my rulers. If your ruler is not currently turned on, you can always go to the View tab in the ribbon and in the show group you can see ruler is checked as well as guides. Now since I use these tools very very often you may want to consider right clicking on that ruler checkbox and using the add to quick access toolbar option as well as the guides. So I want to have both of those in view. Now I can select my first workstation and I want to make sure that when I move that text box up above that it is lined up in the center. So I'm going to come over to my ruler and I'm going to pull a guide and drop that right 
so that it subdivides or cuts in half my workstation. Select the next one and repeat. So we're going to set a guide that is based on the center of each of our workstations. And then I'm also going to pull one down that lines up to the top of or just above all of my workstations. So you can see we have all of these guides in place. Now I'm going to go back to the Home tab and in my list or group of tools, the lower right corner group here is the text block control tool. So I'm going to click on this and now when I click on that workstation you'll notice that I have grabbed this text block. Now I could use the arrows to nudge this into place but since we put the guides there it's a little bit quicker and easier to simply use the mouse and drag those and position them where you want. So by having the guides in place that gives us our target so we don't ever lose sight of where we need these to go. Once those are in place we can go back to the pointer tool and we may want to hide the guides now so I'm gonna just come to the QAT and I'm gonna uncheck my guides and if I ever need them all I have to do is just turn that checkbox back on. So be sure to tune in next week as we continue our exploration of creating a network diagram in Visio. So until then, take care for now. And if you liked what we presented today, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Remember that we do put out new videos on a weekly basis. So until next time, take care for now.